So here we are then, episode 15 of our ongoing series where we're building a web application in Flutterflow. If you've been following along so far, then well done to you. It's been a fantastic series so far. Hopefully you are learning a ton. In this particular episode, we can look at responsive UIs. We're gonna to want to adapt our user interface based on the size of our application running on users' devices themselves. So you'd be learning some key concepts here that you can apply in your own projects. And we're also gonna do some widget visibility as well based on those particular breakpoints as well. So uh, hopefully you find the episode useful and let's get cracking. So I do have a video on my channel which does cover the configuration of responsive design on a web application. Please do go and check the link in the description for that particular video. It will give you a little bit more context around setting some of the values that we're setting with inside this particular application. But this is a crash course, of course, so I'll cover some of those elements in this particular video. But if you want to extend your learning, then please do go and check that particular link. Okay, so the important thing here is that Flutterflow is this platform that is kind of this one size fits all solution to building web applications as well as applications for tablet and of course mobile as well. Now this particular series has been focused more on the website and we'll continue that here, but everything that I'm gonna apply here from a uh, from a responsive perspective can be applied across mobile as well. And to be honest with you, when you're working with mobile and you're working with web in the same project, then a lot more time needs to be spent on adapting your user interface to work with those particular devices. Okay, so what's important for us then with responsive design? Now, at the very beginning of this series, we had a, a very quick tour of the user interface. And we kind of touched on some of those responsive features with inside of Flutterflow itself. And remember, Flutterflow is built in Flutter itself, so which is which is fantastic. So what you kind of get out of the box in this platform is the ability to kind of select options here, like the resize handles here, and you can kind of bring in your, your UI here. So you can actually play out almost those responsive behaviors within inside the platform itself. But of course, that's just one part of it. And we need to look at how all of this is configured and where it, it is configured. So on the left hand side, let's select here this option here called the theme settings to so just select that. And we're into this kind of design system section. And really what this is telling us, this is the bit that's really, really important to us here, this breakpoints area. And as you can see here that in Flutter Flow itself, we have these distinctions of mobile, tablet, tablet, a tablet landscape and desktop. Now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing kind of like the, the amount of pixels of when these breakpoints come into play here. So you can see that everything that's between a zero and a 479. So if we resized our handles to be only less than 479 pixels, then we know that the this particular breakpoint will be triggered. OK, so just keep that in your mind and then we'll see how that plays out in certain configuration areas of Flutterflow going forward. And then we've got tablet and we've got tablet landscape and desktop. Now, these have all got their own individual areas of, uh, of breakpoints. So, so between 479 and 67, uh, six, seven, sorry, 767, this particular then uh, kind of breakpoint would then be triggered as well. And what we could do with inside Flutterflow is we can turn things off, we can turn things on, we can uh, we can adapt font sizing and all that kind of stuff, even padding now. Um, with inside Flutterflow as soon as these actual breakpoints are triggered. And that really allows us to really build out this very, very responsive UI. Um, and it just makes the, the the experience much more pleasing for your users of your application. So let's touch on some of those now actually with inside some of the configuration areas of Flutterflow. Okay, so the best way to do this is guide you through on a very, very simple example. And what I've done is I've kind of put a little screenshot on the bottom of the screen there, just so you can see kind of where our kind of breakpoints are, just as a reminder. What I've also done in this application is I've just gone and put this really is just kind of a little bit of output information just to kind of help along the way. This won't be part of the sample, but it's just there to, to, to show you kind of how all of this stuff works. So what we've got here is this is really outputting these current sizes. So small is currently relating to mobile, medium is relating to kind of the tablet and large is relating to this particular size here, the, the, the range we've got here. So you'll see 991 in here. And then current is then the current screen size that I've currently got when we actually fire this up into the uh, into the test mode. So what we'll then see is as I reduce the size of this application, you'll see that current size kind of reduce. And what we would like to see is that when we get below and we enter one of the sizes here for the breakpoint, you then should see the, the, the actual responsive changes then play out with inside the user interface. 
So to move forward then, let's now configure the sticky notes here just as a really, really simple example. So we're gonna reduce the font size if we reduce this to more of a tablet size. So we can reduce this if we sort of enter from 991 and below. So anything in this particular range, then our font size will reduce. So how do we do that? Really simple. We just move down here on the right hand side and you've got this font size. We're currently hard coded 32 in here. So we're gonna reduce that down to something like 26 based on those responsive breakpoints. So with the font size selected, just select like that now just if I just move this out of the way here forgive that there we go we've now got these kind of various parameters that we've got available to us so what we want to do is we want to check this one here called responsive value so just by choosing this we've now got a number of different options available to us and they give us all of the kind of the characteristics that we need so we can say here we want to set the font size for example if we go below this larger breakpoint size which is in here then we want to reduce then the font size down to like uh, to 26 or something like that anything more than we can be then the the value of 32 so if we're in this desktop range here then we can be uh, at a pitch size of 32. So I'm going to put 32 in here because that's the default size that I want. So that's going to cover our, our, our kind of a larger our desktop view. Now, what can we do here? Well, we can delete delete some of these out because we only want to handle two different font sizes. So we can we can delete these out. Let's um let's remove the the large one here for a second. Let's move the breakpoint uh, here for medium size, and we're just going to then make a change here because at the moment this is saying everything below the breakpoint small, which is kind of down here. So of course we're just handling mobile here. Then we can just adjust that. But we want to say, and we want to change this now to everything then on the large. So let's select that. And then if I move down here, again, let's just move this little screen grabby thing out of the way there. So we got here, we want to set the value. As you can see the first value here, we've got the screen width, which is which is currently the property that we're setting here, or the condition against that property. And then we set the second value here. We can say where this is breakpoint small. Now Flutterflow have got some convenient uh, sort of uh, parameters that we can hook onto for this. If I, if I just select the actual value here, we can then edit this. And if I move down here to the constants, I just close our, our, our constants area there. But we've got this one here called breakpoint large. So we can just select breakpoint large here. There we go. And just hit the, again, just move this out of the way. Maybe that's not the best place to put that in this sample. Just hit confirm there. And we now got that second value set as breakpoint large. So just hit confirm. And now we can say, well, actually, if we're now entering this particular range here, this range here, then we can set the value then down to, say, 26, as I said. So just hit confirm. Now, what we'll see now is when I fire this up, we should see this now play out with inside the uh, test mode. So let's, uh, let's go and do that now. Okay, so here we are then in run mode and you can see here that I've kind of got the full kind of desktop view here. You can see that I've got the current size is 1440 by 900. So we've got that 14 sort of 40 that sort of goes down here and then the 900 that kind of goes down here in the size. And you can see here, these are our target kind of breakpoints just as a point of reference. So at the top here, we've kind of in currently in the desktop view and you can see here that we're 1440. So we, we haven't entered this particular area here just below this 991. So we want to hit 990 and then we should then see our typeface kind of reduce in size. Now, of course, I can come here and I can choose this option, but we're still 1024. We're not in this range yet. Okay, so what I can do though in Flutterflow is I can just select this here. Now, if you keep your eyes closely peeled here to the sticky notes, if I now reduce this now to 990, which is now enters that breakpoint, we should see our typeface reduce. There it goes. It just subtly reduced then down to 26 from 32. So we're now in that breakpoint. Now, unfortunately, the run mode doesn't allow us to kind of sort of stretch and kind of reduce the size of our UI here to kind of test it out. But the good thing is, is you can just, you can customize your size there to enter these breakpoints just to then get that, that visual feedback back with inside the UI. So that's running up in test mode. Let's now go further and let's now adjust, adjust some further kind of responsive parameters with inside our application. So I've just got rid of my um, sort of text info widget here that was bringing those details back. I don't think we really need those anymore. Hopefully that little last bit is quite clear. Let's focus on making some change here to this particular section. Then we've got our title row. And at the moment, we've kind of got these fixed sizes on the actual sort of padding here on the left and the right hand side. And of course, we don't really want that to be so big. When we do reduce our, our size of our screen down, we want to kind of reduce those values as well. So the good thing about it is in Flutterflow, we can just go over here. We can actually select this 
little option here. We can go to the responsive value again. And of course, here are all of our options available to us. And we know at the bottom here, we want to keep this as 60 because it's the default for the largest. Then we want to reduce a further down based on these breakpoints. So what I can do here is I can come in here and I'm going to reduce this down to 48. If we're just below a large, I'm going to reduce this down to 32 here. If we are below a medium and on this particular one, I'm just going to reduce this down to 16 pixels um, from the left hand side. So they're all now set. Now what I can do is confirm this. What's great about Flutterflow is here, we can just select this option here. We can click on this option here and copy the variable. We can now take this and apply exactly the same on the right hand side. So with that selector selected there, just paste that in and just hit confirm. And we're going to get exactly the same characteristics there on the left and right. Let's go and quickly check this out now and hopefully we should still be able to reduce our size and see those play out. OK, so here we are in test mode. I brought the screenshot on the screen as well, so you can see now the breakpoints that we're kind of working to. So let's try the 991. If I move up here and reduce this then down to, say, anything that's less than 991, so we're just going to do 990, you then should see the padding get reduced just here. Just hit the save there. And you can now just see that that is now being slightly reduced. If we take this one step further now, let's try testing this particular range here. So anything less than seven, six, seven. So just go up here. Let's just change this again. Let's do seven, six, six, like that. Hit save. And we've now brought our padding in here as well. So you can see that they're all playing out. We're not going to try the mobile view here because it will go horribly wrong. The screen won't look particularly great because this is not an optimized mobile application. But hopefully from that, you can start to see that our responsive values are all taking shape. We obviously want to now go back into Flutterflow. We want to adapt to this particular kind of column here to kind of handle the same kind of padding that we've got here. And let's go and apply that now. OK, so with our title row selected, let's grab one of these here. Just click on that one. Let's copy. We're using the three dots, copy variable like that. And I believe the one that we need to change is down here in the notes column. So make sure you've got the I selected here with inside the conditional builder. Choose notes column. And this has got this will have the same rules apply to it. So just move up here to our 60s. So let's just click on that there. Let's paste that variable in there and hit confirm. And we also need to do the same on the right hand side. Just select that and let's paste that in there as well. Just hit confirm. That's it. So that's all nicely played out. Now, what would be really nice in Flutterfront, it might be at the time that you are watching this, if they've applied this here, with inside our notes wrap here, it would be nice to be able to set the spacing here and the run space, and just so we can bring our sticky notes in a little bit based on those responsive values. I'm sure that will be a feature that will be coming in the not too distant future. But for now, that's what we're dealing with, and um, those settings are now applied. So let's now move on to the next bit. OK, so one of the excellent features within inside of Flutterflow is to, for you to be able to kind of uh, display widgets or hide widgets based on those responsive breakpoints. So what we're going to do in here, we're just going to have a little bit of a play around with this um, and just to, as more from a demonstration perspective, because chances are you're going to be applying this with inside your projects throughout. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this particular left navigation column and the vertical divider if the user reduces their size of their application or runs it on a device which is much smaller than a, a desktop view. And the way, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to, with the left navigation selected, up the right hand side here, we've got these options here called responsive. And we've got these ones just here. Now, what's really great about it, this is where we can control that visibility. So with the left navigation selected, we've got this one, this option here, we can select this and we can put a strike through, which means that this particular widget will not be displayed with inside the visibility on the screen. This is what you can see here in the brackets there, the screen width smaller than 479. I can also then do the same here for anything less than Seven, six, uh, seven. we can also turn that off as well. And of course, these kind of build up progressively. So of course, if I obviously adjust enable this one to be on, then the, the actual widget will then be displayed again once it hits that 479 and but, oh, sorry, below less than 479. So I'm going to kind of build these up um, in this particular way. So we know that we're not going to display this widget when these responsive kind of breakpoints have been met. And of course, we're going to keep it on the landscape. We're going to keep it on the desktop as well. And you can see here on the left hand side, you should have this like little um, kind of icon that is by the side so you can kind of easily see with inside the widget tree that reference so just make sure that works with the vertical divider let's do the same thing there as well let's just turn that one off and turn that one off and then again you can see that icon is now being applied so that's great so um, let's quickly just test this now and uh, just make sure that that disappears when we re reduce it to those really smaller kind of sizes let's do that now 
Okay, so here we are in test mode, then you can see everything is all perfectly in view. You can see our notes panel that's displayed because we're in that uh, that break point that allows us to do that. Let's reduce down then to this one here. This is fine because we're still 1024. Remember, we need to reduce ourselves down to this 767. So anything less than that, we then should see that in view. So just select that. Let's go to the width. Let's put then 767. So we're directly on it. Okay, hit save and we can still see it's there. But if we just now reduce it down by one because we're going less than, we do 766, hit save. You can now see perfectly that is disappeared. If I set the mobile view here, you can now see that we're starting to get what might look like a mobile UI when you start handling all of this responsiveness with inside your application. I mean, you've got gaps here and all this kind of stuff, and you would probably need to display some new navigation bar across the bottom there, which allow you to kind of then select the notes in a different kind of way than what we've got on that left-hand side. But you can start to see now we're seeing that behavior that we kind of would expect if you are now working with sort of multiple sizes. So Brilliant, so hopefully that's a good little demo. Okay, to summarize then, you can see how powerful the responsive uh, features with inside Flutterflow can really, really work to your advantage when you're building these complex user interfaces. Your users kind of expect you to obviously apply time to your UI to make it adaptable across all of those multiple of uh, uh, sort of devices. So uh, Flutterflow makes it really easy to do that. So there's no excuses with inside your user interface. So there you go. Hopefully you found all of that really, really informative and useful to apply to your own particular projects please do obviously like the video we really do appreciate your likes and of course subscribe to the channel as well if you love this kind of walkthrough content and also more importantly please do come and visit us at the no code academy as well so the link is in the description it'd be great to have you there as a member if you are looking to extend and uh, build on your knowledge with inside the flow flow and the no code space so uh, until the next episode i'll see you soon